Hello everyone. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Pokey API and making a Pokemon application out of it. And the Pokemon application that we're going to be making is going to look something like this, uh, where we have Pokemon and then there's also pagination on it. So we can go forward or back. And then what we can also do is click on one of these Pokemon and it will bring up their detail view and show us their stat line as well as their typing. So without further ado, let's get started on this. Now to get started, we're going to be extending the functionality on top of an existing project, which is Svelte Blog. If you haven't watched my previous videos on how to make the Svelte Blog, make sure to watch those. Uh, it's with that same setup using Vite, Tailwind, Daisy UI, and uh, you know Svelte Navigator and some of those other ones. So yeah, if we take a look at package.json, we have Tailwind, Oh, it's also with TypeScript, Svelte TypeScript, Base UI, Svelte Navigator. If you have all this stuff, it should be good to go. And to get started here, we're going to make a page for our Pokemon. So inside source, inside pages, we are going to add a file here called Pokemon.Svelte. This is going to be our list view. And we need to fetch the Pokemon from the API, first of all. So we're going to set up a script tag which is where we put all of our TypeScript slash JavaScript inside of our Svelte files. Um, language, language equals TypeScript. And we are going to, I'm just gonna route to this first of all, maybe make a nav bar. Because right now our project looks like this to start out with. To start out with, this is what our blog project turned out to be. But I want it to turn into something like this where we still have articles but there's this nav bar on top of here that brings us to Pokemon. And then we also have a home page. So this is what we're going to be building. Yeah. So inside of our app dots felt, I actually want the home page as well. Uh, <laughs> before that, home dots felt. And we're just going to say this is home. And then we're also going to add a components folder, components. And this is going to have our nav bar in it, nav bar dots felt. And then inside of our app dots felt, Instead of articles being the home page, we're gonna have the home be the home page. And then we're gonna just bring this down. And this is gonna be slash articles, articles, and then this will be articles. Home, make sure to import that for default home. Great. And then we're gonna also just put our nav bar up here so that it will be on all of these different components, all these different pages in the nav bar. It's pretty simple. Uh, I'm going to make this language TS just to have better highlighting. There we go. It's pretty simple. All we do is navigate to slash when we hit the home button, navigate to articles when we hit the articles button, navigate to Pokemon when we hit um, Pokemon. And then with the CSS classes, that's all Tailwind and Daisy UI, so it should look pretty decent. And let's actually do this view again because I kind of like being able to see both at once, although it does make it look kind of weird if um, if it's <laughs> it makes this one look really weird. But this one, look, there's home. Uh, I forgot to save this, so or save both. Of them. There we go. There's our nav bar, so we can go to articles. There's articles. Pokemon. There's nothing there. Home is just home. Okay, so we're working on the Pokemon page now. And what I like to do to fetch Pokemon is I like to define a API folder. So inside source, I'm going to make an API folder. Inside the API folder, I'm going to put Pokemon.ts. And then I'm also going to make a config.ts. This is where we put all of our common functions. Inside Pokemon, we're going to export a function to get our Pokemon. So export const get pokemon actually i'm just going to copy this over because it's going to take too long otherwise so here we go we have get pokemon it has options which are offset and limit so if you look at the pokey api uh, we can add offset and limit to it yeah offset and limit so limit equals 100 offset is 200 that's for pagination um to get the base url and pokemon path that's where the config comes into play i'm just going to copy this over so here's our base url this pokeyapi.co should match this for a base URL. And then the um, slash Pokemon is the Pokemon path. And then we just put those inside of here. 
slash book one. And then that will give us a list of book one. And I need to import these. So command dot import and uh, import. And then types. I like to add types as well. And that is just going to be a separate file. So types.d.ts. And I'm going to copy this over as well. This is these interfaces are the same as what this Pokemon API will will be. So if I go, let's go here and just go slash Pokemon. So right here we have results name URL. So our many Pokemon response has account next previous and results with the name and URL. And that's right here, name and URL, and it's an array. So that's what that is for our single Pokemon response. Um, so let's do Charizard. I think I spelled that wrong. Charizard. There we go. Charizard. Right here we have, and I can just kind of pick and choose which ones I want and which ones I don't want. Name, order, ID, abilities. They're all on here. Stats are in here. Stats are down here. And that's uh, an object, or actually it's an array of base stat um, and, and then stat and then name. So. <laughs> The stats are kind of weird looking, but it's okay. And then we have the sprites, which is an any, I guess. But it's going to have front default is the one I want, mostly. And then we have types, moves, and abilities. And we just got to make sure these map up correctly. So let me just import those types. Import all as types from dot slash types. Import type. There we go. And then this fetch JSON function, I also have to explain and add that. So fetch JSON, it's just so that I can skip a step. So right here, we're doing our await response.json. And we're also seeing if our response is OK. If it's not OK, then console and error. And then we're doing our try catch block. This is just so that I don't have to do this every time I make a new, new route. Because the second route that we're doing is going to be for a single Pokemon, and that is going to look like this. So export const get single Pokemon, and we can pass in a name or ID, which is a string or number. So right here, Charizard, we can pass in Charizard, or we can just pass in a number. So and let's just do one. One is going to be Bulbasaur. Um, I think Charizard is what, not nine? Uh, that's Blastoise, actually. Blastoise is nine, so Charizard must be six. I did something wrong. Gosh darn it. Let's go back here. Pokemon 6 is Charizard. There we go. So that's what that is. And then, yeah, we do, we pass that in here. Our fetch JSON takes the path and then any other options like headers or what type of method it is. So if we're doing like a post. I wish the sun wouldn't get in my way so much. You know, you know what I mean? So I'm just gonna scoot over. Ah, oh, that's so annoying. So annoying. There we go. How does that help? Does that help a lot? Yeah, it does. Helps a lot, a lot. Okay, great. Okay. <clears throat> Where were we here? All right, so we got our types and stuff correct, and we can now fetch. Next thing I want to do is add to the store. So I'm going to do Pokemon.ts in the stores and this is where we're going to actually call our uh, our functions that we just made so uh, maybe i should do command slash and then open that up the api one and then just kind of do the same things but you know that's it gets uh gets to be too much here let's just yeah let's just define our stores our pokemon stores we're gonna have our Pokemon list, um, some pagination, and then our single Pokemon. Yeah, that should be fine. And we gotta make sure that we import all this stuff. So command dot and import all this. Uh, that is, Pokemon list is a type. Our Pokemon list is just gonna have a name and a URL. All right, and then writable is also that, but this has to be a type imported. Import type writable. There we go. This Pokemon response is just going to be. No, I think I'm just going to use the types that Pokemon response. Just import type 
all from source slash source slash API slash types. And does that work? Oh, type all as types. There we go. And if you didn't get it, uh, in order to import source or from source, we need this uh, TS fight TS config paths and then put that into our defined config. Otherwise, it, it won't work. So, yeah, just something to note there. Okay, so we have our stores defined. Next thing we want to do is we want to fetch the list of Pokemon by using that function that we defined in, in our Pokemon API um, part. So let me bring that over. And we are going to import get Pokemon from there. All right. And so fetch Pokemon takes options, which is offset limit, and it passes the options into get Pokemon. And then we say, if no data, throw an error. Otherwise, we want to set our pagination, and we also want to set our Pokemon list to the results. All right, so inside of our Pokemon page, let's call this. We'll go dollar sign promise equals fetch Pokemon. And it won't have any options in it for now. And that should be fine. It automatically imported for us. And now we need to use our await block in order to get this in here. But I'm going to put that into a separate component because I think it's pretty useful to do so. Await.svelte. And this await.svelte is going to basically just be an await block. Await our promise. And inside of our script, it's going to be language of TS. And we got to make sure that we export our promise, export let the promise here, like so, so that it will use it down here. And then this will be our waiting block. Our then results will be our results. So we'll go div results. And then I also need a catch in here. I don't know why I didn't make that, but. You can do catch like so, catch an error. If there's an error, we'll just say there was an API error. All right, so that's pretty good. There is one other thing though. I want to be able to customize this. So inside of here, I want to add slots. And I think it works like this. I can just have a div that has slot equal to uh, content. And let's actually get rid of that slot equal. How do I do svelte slots? Svelte slots. Wait, how do I name these? Slot name. Oh, okay. So instead of div here, it has to be slot. And then name equals content. If I want some default behavior here, I can just add that in to the slot by default. So this will be our default content when we have this await um, component. Yeah, so let's go to, not this one, this one. Right now we're not showing anything still. Go to pokemon.svelte and let's do an await block here now. Now that we have that await component. And then in here, we're gonna do our div. Sure, and this will have a slot equaling content. There we go. So now whatever is put here will be put for the results. And then this takes a prop of promise. And then inside of our content, we can do our for block. So we should take each or each block. And here we're gonna import our Pokemon as Pokey. Uh, let's see here, where's our store? What do we call it? Pokemon list. This is gonna be our Pokemon list and import that. There we go. And we're going to just do pokey.name for now and see if it shows up. And it's not showing up yet. Let's see what happened here. It should show up. Either that or it's not being called. Fetch Pokemon. It's doing a wait, get Pokemon. Wait, get Pokemon. Those are base URL, Pokemon path. There's no option, so it doesn't add this in. Is it making our request? Fetch JSON should be fetching. Let's see here. Wait, promise. I might be doing the promise wrong. That might be it. Or I need to have this be a slot 
as well. The slot is going to be A equals waiting. And then this slot is going to be error. A equals error. Still not showing up. Let's put it like promise. It's going to be a promise of void. I don't know if that helps. Probably not. Oh, I think I know why. I actually do need to add in the limit, I think. Let's go into Pokemon and let's see what kind of path this makes. CLO path. Let's copy that. It's not even calling this, is it? Why is it not calling? If Pokemon. It's not even showing Pokemon on here. Side of our app that's felt. Oh, I forgot to add it in here. That's why. My goodness. Okay, so we need to do slash Pokemon. And then oh, Pokemon. Hey, there we go. We're getting all of our Pokemon. Nice, okay. <laughs> I was like, this thing is not like showing up at all <laughs> gotta make sure that the route is included okay great so there we go we have our content and now we want to show the, the list so kind of like this one where it's a list of them uh, inside of cards so i'm just going to copy over the, some of this markup and let's import navigate from spell navigator and then uppercase is a new function that i find but here we go, uh, yeah, and obviously it's not resolving because this is an error. So this button is going to be a card, padding 3, margin 2, back, background base 300, flex, justify center, item center, hover, background black, hover, text white. And then on click, it's going to navigate to the pokey and then the pokey name. So we should add that route as well, and also the page. So this route will be slash Pokemon slash ID. Um, and make sure there's a colon here. And this will be single Pokemon. And we're going to add that page, single Pokemon, like so. Um, make sure it's not felt. Here we go. And then we're going to say single Pokemon just to see if the routing is working. And make sure to import it here. And then when we go to slash one, there we go. We get single Pokemon. Nice. Okay. And then we have our image and we just kind of hack this. It's raw GitHub user content, and then we get the sprites, get Pokemon number, which is the in the URL. Um, and that is also a function that I'd find. And the get pokey number function is right here. This is where we split up the URL because right here, let's just go to the list of Pokemon. This URL is what we're getting it from. We're taking this number right at the end. That's what we're taking, and we're putting that into this uh, this URL here to get the sprite. And then to get uppercase, I think I'm going to define that in here. <clears throat> so right there, that's our uppercase function. Um, I just got it from Stack Overflow. Name.char at zero dot uppercase plus name dot slice one. And it works like a charm. So I'll make sure to import that and save it, and then we should be getting a nice list here. Yes. Okay, so here's our list. It's just one long straight line. But it looks all right. And then if I click on one, it brings us to the single Pokemon page. And it, it should, yeah, updates it with the Pokemon that, that was clicked on. So slash Venusaur, slash Charmander. Nice. All right, awesome. Let's remove these console logs. Now, I don't really want it to be just one long straight list. I'd rather have it be you know, fill up the space here. So in order to do that, we're gonna have a div around this and it's gonna have a class of grid, grid columns, and we'll maybe do two columns. Uh, two, yeah, two columns. Right? And maybe I have to do with full, no. Oh, I, I need grid on here. Yeah, so that's display grid. There we go. So there we go, we have two columns. We can have three if we just, do three here or four if we want four but yeah that looks all right let's just do let's actually change it to like one if it's a small screen and then if it's a big screen say like large then we'll do grid columns of three yeah do something like that so there we just have one column going all the way down all right but then if it gets bigger Let's try making this big. Then it turns to three. See that? 
That's how easy Tailwind is to use. It's so nice. So nice. All right. And it looks like our slot of Pokemon is in there. Oh, that's actually the stiff. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, now we want to add pagination, and we also want to add the single Pokemon page. So I think what we're going to do first is add the single Pokemon page, because I think that is pretty useful. So inside of here, we need to fetch our single Pokemon, first of all. So we'll go script language equals TypeScript, and then we'll go dollar sign, and we need to do our promise equals fetch single Pokemon, but I don't think I have this defined yet. So inside Pokemon, this is fetch Pokemon, we need to export a const, which is fetch single Pokemon. And that's gonna be an async function that takes in an ID, yeah, an ID. And then we need to do const data equals await get single Pokemon. And that's from our other file, API Pokemon. And we will pass in the ID there which is going to be either a string or a number. It doesn't really matter. And then with our data, then we're going to set our single Pokemon. So we'll go single Pokemon dot set, and we'll set it to the data. I think it's just the data. Let me check here. Yeah. But if there is no data that's returned, then we're just going to throw an error. All right. So that's cool. So now we can actually fetch that. So fetch single Pokemon, I think it will show up. Fetch single Pokemon, there we go. Auto imports, so that's awesome. And I spelled it wrong. Uh, it's gonna annoy me, fetch uh, with an H. Make sure to spell it right. There we go, fetch and save that. There we go. Fetch single Pokemon, and then where do we get the ID from? Well, it's in, in this URL, right? So Svelte Navigator has something really nice to grab that. And it is with params. So we're just going to do let params equal use params. And then we're going to put our params in here. So dollar sign params. And then whatever we named it inside of our routes. So inside of the app. You see here we named it ID. So that has to be the same as what we named put right here, dot ID. That has to be the same. All right, so if I save that, then this should be working, but um, we haven't displayed anything yet, really. Um, single Pokemon, yeah, okay. So now we need to actually display this, and here we'll use the await thing again that we made so that it's reusable. And we'll pass in promise, and then we'll do our div of content. If if you don't want this div here, you can actually use felt uh, fragment. So actually I'll try using that. Svelte fragment and then we just pass in our slot equals uh, content, right? And then we can use our selected Pokemon. So just to see if it's showing up, I'm just going to do dollar sign selected Pokemon. thought it would show up. Darn it. What is it? It's called our single Pokemon. Okay, not selected. Single and command dot. See if it will. There we go. Single Pokemon. And then since we're using TypeScript, we get this great Intel sense on what the available things that we have on this are. So in this case, I want the name. So let's save that. And there we go. We get Bulbasaur. So if I go to a different Pokemon, Venusaur, I get Venusaur. If I go to a different Pokemon, I get Charmeleon. So that's how we know that our fetch single Pokemon function is working correctly. And that means we can build out this page. So what do we need on this page? Well, we need the, the heading, which is going to be the name. And then we need our typing. And then we also want our stats. And then we also want the sprite as well. So uh, not the easiest thing in the world, but uh, we'll get there. First thing I'll add is the, the title, which is the name. And that will just be this, which is pretty simple h1 that is to uppercase here is our uh, charmeleon and i'm actually going to wrap all this inside of a flex container flex column with full item center and margin top of three and i'm just going to wrap all that and there we go now it's centered as well 
And then underneath this H1, I'm going to loop through the types. Since typing can be either one or two, um, it's safe to loop through it. Uh, it's actually safer to loop through it than to try and guess like if it's going to be a length of one or a length of two. And there we go. Um, I also have this color look up too. You see how this is green if it's grass and then purple if it's poison. Um, yeah, there's a, I just have a dictionary that's defined for that. So I'm going to add this to my Pokemon store. It's just a, a list of colors and their, their background. So for bug, it's going to be this color. And then their backgrounds is going to be a little bit lighter of that color. And then I can just import that. And then when I look it up, I just use that name of the uh, typing. So if I save that and go to ours, there we go. Uh, Charmeleon is fire. Nice. And then for this to be dynamic, I use the style tag and I pass in uh, a templating tag and do color and then JavaScript to look that up. And then background color, JavaScript to look up the background color, which returns the uh, the hash, the uh, this hash right here, which gives the color. So nice, 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 nice. Making good progress. Next thing, we need the sprite here. And that is pretty simple. Just underneath this, uh, underneath the flex box, actually. So right here, we're going to have an image tag and single Pokemon.sprites.front default. Um, if I want to, I can find that inside my types, but I didn't for some reason. But it shows up right here and looking beautiful. With Tailwind, we can specify what width we want it to be. If I want it to be larger, I can just specify that. And now it's big. But I'll keep it at 300. So there's our sprite. Next thing we need to do is our stats. And the stats are actually kind of complicated, but, you know, it's not too bad. At least I don't think so. And I'm just going to copy that over just so this video doesn't get too long. All right, so we have this div. That's a width of 75%. And then we get our stats, and we're going to loop through all of our stats. And then we also got to see what the max stat is so that we can determine the width of the bar. If you look at this one, um, the, the one that's the maximum is going to take up the full width. And then all of these other ones are based on that um, maximum 80 number. So, yeah. So we need this max stat function. All it's doing is I'm going to find the max value. So I'm just going to copy that over here. Max stat takes in the list of stats. And the stat type is um, the stat right here, this interface. There's our stat type, base stat, effort, and stat with the name. And then we do the values, we do stats for each, and we push on push that on to this array, and then we can do math.max and pass in the values. Math.max will find the maximum value and return it. And then that's how we get that. Save that, and then we should get, yeah, sweet. We got all of our beautiful colors as well from this color, white, background color, color lookup uh, function right here. So that is awesome, 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 awesome. And the math here is we just take our stat.base stat divided by our max stat, and we multiply it by 100 so that we get the get the width and percentage. You also got to make sure to have that percentage sign at the end there. All right. And also this stat I made uppercase, and then for the special attack, there's a dash in between there, so I just replaced that with a space as well. All right, now let's add pagination to this thing. So if I go back to Pokemon... There's no pagination buttons here. It's just the um, the first 20 or so Pokemon. But in order to see more than that, we got to add pagination. And that is not, well, it's definitely kind of tricky. First of all, we need to add some buttons around this. So so I'm actually going to do a, a big div. First of all, we're going to do div dot height screen dot flex dot items center item center dot justify center and wrap this around that okay so that brought that like that which is not correct oh that's why this should actually not wrap around bring that back up we're going to have a, another div around this that is going to be wrapped so we'll go div dot width of 11 twelfths dot grid dot grid columns 
of 12 dot MX auto to center it. And I did something wrong here. What did I do? Oh, it's because of the 11 twelfths, isn't it? Darn it. Uh, let's do div dot grid dot grid columns 12 dot MX auto. And then we'll add in the width of 11 twelfths here. And this is going to wrap around. All right, save that. Wow, it looks pretty weird, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, to fix that, all we have to do is inside of this div here, the slot content, we are going to add a column span oh, inside of content. No, inside of class. Yeah. Add a class equaling to column span of 12. That should take us back to normal. Maybe not. Instead, it just disappeared. Nice. <laughs> now, I think it's because my weight uses it. No. What if I bring... Well, let's make this a fragment. Actually, let's get rid of that, and we'll do slot equaling content on here, and get rid of this. Get rid of that div. Yeah. And then inside of here, we're going to do span column or column span of 10. There we go. So what we're doing is we're making 12 columns and then we're saying that this one compared to this one here is going to take up 10 of those spaces. And then down here we're going to also have another div and that's going to be basically the same one as this. All right. Cool. And this is what's going to hold our buttons. So these these next and forward buttons or back and forward that's what this is going to be holding. Let's do the forward button first. And this is going to have our pagination thing in here. So let's import that. I think we already made it. Yep. And this go forward function as well. So there's our forward button. I know it looks amazing. <laughs> uh, but our go forward function is going to be a function up here. And I might as well add my go back function as well. And then that's going to have our offset and limit, and that's just going to be variables up here. Let offset equal zero. And this actually has to be above our promise so that we can pass it in. And we're going to let our limit equal 20. That's our defaults. And then we're going to pass those options in here. So we're going to say offset and limit so that we get pagination. And now forward should work. So if I hit forward and it's not working, I wonder why. Pagination. Well, let's add our, our back button quick here. Here's our back button. Fetch Pokemon offset limit. This should work. Uh, where's my back button actually? I save this right. If I make this bigger, what happens? I just see forward. Interesting. Where's my back button? Oh, is it because it's disabled? If I go forward. Huh. What is my pagination doing? Yeah, I'm setting my pagination for next and previous. So that should be fine. And right here we have our next and previous things here. But I'm actually not using that. I don't believe so. Am I? Does my inspect give me anything useful? Yes, it does. CMP is null. CMP is null. Okay. There's our back button. Forward. Oh, now it's working. I just had to refresh. Great. Don't you just love software? It's great. Now I can go forward and back, and I can get to different Pokemon. Great. Let's go. And I can, if I extend it out, it goes to three, three lanes. And <laughs> looks like it's a little bit uh, weird like that. In order to fix that weirdness, inside my away component or not inside there i'll just go to my pokemon and you know how i name the slot waiting well i can just use that to my advantage here if inside of here i just have another div of slot waiting i can just add this class in there and then it should be pretty much the same as the other content and then it won't jump back and forth so so bad yeah there, it, it's keeping the width so it doesn't shrink and, you know, jump all over the place. So that's pretty awesome. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please consider hitting the subscribe button. I hope I provided a lot of value with, with this video. It was a long one. Uh, if you made it to the end, I thank you very much. 
and uh, yeah comment down below and I'll make sure to respond if you have any questions I'll respond to those and thank you much for watching thanks bye